Hi everyone, this is Anna, one of your consumer technology specialists at Midcontinent Public Library. Today we are going to take a look at a few free budgeting apps. So the first app we're going to look at today is called Fudget. The app is free for both Apple and Android users with an option to pay a small fee to remove the ads. Um, the one-time fee does also give you a few extra customization options as well, which we'll see when we get into it. We're going to take a look at the app on an iPad today, and we are going to be looking for an orange icon with a white circle and an F inside. So it is here on my home screen. I'm just going to tap it, and that will open it. And Fudget is a very simple budgeting app. While most other budgeting apps require linking to your bank accounts to fully function, the data in Fudget is completely entered by the user. So this can be a really good option if you're uneasy letting an app access your bank accounts. It does give you the flexibility to create a budget the way that works best for you including creating and naming your different categories. And here we have our budget page. If you notice along the top, there's sort of a menu bar, and this has settings on the left and the budget in the middle, and then there are options on the right. And then we have our workspace where we work with our budget, and there are some ads at the bottom. I've gone ahead and started a budget for us. So I've created three categories in our budget and I'm going to tap on this first one to open it. So here I can see there are income and expense items. Income items are green and have the plus sign before the amount and the expenses are red and have the minus sign before the amount. Just below the last item are buttons to add income or add expenses. So to add something, I would just tap whichever button, so income, and then I can put in whatever identifying information I want. It could be the name of the person I am paying or the business I did the transaction with or it could just be a general category like gas station. Really, it's up to you. It's whatever will work best for your budget and your identifying your transactions. After I type it in, then I do need to tap into the box just to the right in order to add the amount for the transaction. And then I can either tap return on my keyboard or I can tap in the open orange space on the background to deselect the item. Below that we have amounts. And right now I see expenses on the left and a balance on the right. I can tap either to toggle the display to the other option and those options are income and paid amounts. And to switch back, I would just tap again. If I want to add a bit more detail, I can tap in the top right corner where it says options and it has the three lines. So it's like a more options menu. Most of the options are grayed out, we can see. Those features become available with that one-time fee that also removes the ads. The bottom of my list, I do have some options that are kind of bolder and I, I know I can use those. So I can show a running balance and I can show the date in a column. These are things I can toggle on and off. So if I tap either one, the check mark that's kind of grayed out, it becomes filled in and then I can see the change on my display. So you can see that now we have the date column added and you can add the dates in after the fact. So maybe you just put a bunch of transactions in and you didn't have the date column showing. 
I'm just going to tap it to show and then enter those dates. I do want to note that the lines don't automatically organize in date order. You do have to do that manually if that's what you prefer. So here I have this November 12th date at the bottom, and if I just kind of tap and hold with my finger on that line, I can then continue to hold while I drag the line into the proper place. So I can put it in chronological order. For me, it's easier to see what I have going on with my transactions when they're in date order. So I probably would go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to go ahead and tap budgets in the top left corner. Um, that'll take me back to my main budget page. And then if I tap on the credit card category that I have here, I can see I also have some expenses there. So I have put all of these expenses in individually. I've decided that for me, the best way to mark that I've paid an item on the credit card is to add an expense transaction to my debit account, which is what I would be using to pay the credit card. And then I would add a income transaction to the credit card account. And that would balance my budget there is also an option to mark the items as paid. So if I just swipe to the left on each individual line, I can mark it as paid. I can also star it or delete it. And then when I tap on paid, I get kind of like a strike through for that whole line. I'm going to tap budgets again to go back to that page. And now instead of choosing a category, I'm going to tap on the left to the settings to check out that page. And here I get more information about pro options. You will note that there is even the option to try out a specific pro feature before you pay for it. Again, that's the small fee that it's a one-time fee. When I scroll down, I can see more setting options like what type of currency symbol I want to use, as well as whether I want to be able to swipe to delete an item. And I can also add a passcode to the entire app for extra security. And then when I scroll farther down, I can see a help section with tutorials as well as a more information section. And there is a link to social media for the app and an option to join a newsletter. So the newsletter probably will have budgeting tips. It probably has information about any updates that happen, that sort of thing. So now that we've seen what Fudget can do, let's check out another budget app. Now I'm going to go back to my home screen. So I'm pressing my home button, but however you get back to your home screen. And the second app I'm going to show you today is NerdWallet. And NerdWallet is the icon with the green. So it's, it's the letter N with multiple colors of green, kind of geometric triangles. So I'll tap that to open it. The interesting thing about NerdWallet is that it is a budget app, but it was created as a companion to a financial education website, which is also called NerdWallet. We won't be able to do much with this app today since we don't have accounts to connect to it, but we can still see from the homepage that it can help you track cash flow, net worth, and your credit score. Below that kind of highlight section, there is a section for insights. And then when you do have your accounts connected, they could be bank accounts, they could be um, accounts where you have bills. Once you have those connected, you do receive personalized financial insights. So that's just something to note. 
The last section of the home page is this find the right product for your money goals section. And then there's a list of categories. You can swipe left and right to swipe through them. There is a lot of information for each category so that you can learn about or compare different options. The other tabs on this menu are along the bottom. Again, we've got credit, cash flow, net worth, so these take you to the same pages as if you were to click those same options at the top of the home page. So it's just another place where you can access it. So if maybe you're on a different tab from the bottom menu, you can switch right between them without having to go back to the home page to find the link. In addition to all of those, there is also a marketplace tab, and this is another place to look through the categories that are listed at the bottom of the home page. There's also a little profile icon in the top left corner. If you tap that, this is where you can access your settings and profile information. You can even look there to see what accounts you have connected to the app under the financial info section. And then tapping on settings has just a few options. So there are settings for notifications, password, and to close your account. Tapping the notifications option does give you a good size list of possible email or mobile device notifications that you can kind of customize them to your wants and needs. So if you're interested in NerdWallet, you may want to check out their website at nerdwallet.com. It has even more information about finances. There are guides, there are calculators. So like there's a calculator to help you determine what mortgage rate would be manageable for you. That's just some of the options. These are just a couple of budgeting apps that we have looked at today. I hope you find this video helpful and we will see you again next time. That's it for today's video. If you liked it, make sure you let us know by following our MCPL 360 page on Facebook and our MCPL MO channel on YouTube. We premiere new videos every Wednesday and Friday at 1 p.m. And if you miss the live event, you can always find all of our videos on YouTube on one of our many technology-related playlists on our YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you again next time.